Hello, good afternoon, everybody, dear colleagues, ladies, gentlemen. It's again a great privilege to ask to lecture at the important Diabetes India meeting 2023. As you can see from the title, I've been asked to discuss type 2 diabetes, notions and implications of uh, the cardio renal metabolic interplay. I think a rather hot topic, important topic, as many of us believe we are witnessing a profound change in paradigm. My disclosures, well, starting pathophysiologically, we have to understand there is something like a common soil concept. Everything seems to occur, seems to develop at the same time in parallel. At the center, we see this uh, risky cluster composed from insulin resistance, this metabolism, low-grade inflammation, oxidative stress, microangiopathy, neurohumor factors, RAS activation, and sympathetic nervous system hyperactivity. And uh, this is actually driving the manifestation of type 2 diabetes, but in parallel and in time, also giving injury to the heart and uh, the kidney. Of course, as we know, those organs interact with each other, but the important thing is that there is emerging fibrosis and both at the heart uh, leading to structural changes, diastolic uh, dysfunction as perhaps the first sign and glomerular and tubular injury uh, at the kidney. Actually, there have been recent pathogenetic um, pathways uh, delineated, which really uh, uh, act on all the organs just mentioned on the right side. You see the pathway of uh, oxidative stress defense uh, interacting with lipid metabolism. But it's important here also with iron metabolism. And so the premature cell death one is looking here is called ferroptosis. Induced by hyperglycemia, free fatty acids are the risk factors. And so in parallel, we have injury to the cardiomyocytes and myocyte dysfunction uh, alluded to primarily uh, early as diastolic dysfunction, then renal tubular mesangial polycyte injury, nerve injury, pancreatic beta cell leading to the development and onset of type diabetes and also the retina and the bone are targets. Now, if so, uh, is there evidence that at manifestation of type 2 diabetes, there's also evidence for damage to kidney and the heart? Actually, we uh, published this a little while ago, got many comments at the time, but it's now well established as we show here, some 40% actually uh, as assessed by measuring albumin excretion urine have uh, really um, injury at the kidney level. At the same time, the ECG-based uh, assessment, and this was largely uh, left ventricular hypertrophy association, diastolic dysfunction. So uh, this is. Uh, really overwhelming, ready at the beginning. On the top, you see the multitude of risk factors, our blood pressure, its obesity. So this was cross-sectionally a manifestation of diabetes. Now, what about the lifetime risk of cardiovascular renal disease? A huge uh, database, and the notion here went into uh, type 2 diabetes patients with chronic kidney disease, and 3 in 10 with uh, heart failure. And together, 4 out of 5 people with type 2 diabetes will be diagnosed with CVD or CKD or die from CV uh, causes. Now, this is, has become the major issue, and already alluded to, this probably signals a change in uh, paradigm. Just when you look here, what are the earliest um, manifestations of all the complications 
countries is listed here. In blue, you see that cardiorenal disease by far outweighs early on uh, other um, complications like uh, heart attacks or stroke in red, some 60% uh, amount to this uh, cardiorenal disease. And if present, it's really bad news in terms of all cause death, which is more than threefold up in cardiovascular, it's more than it's close to four times up. So it really, when we recognize it's abundant, it's very early, signaling bad news has become the major issue uh, in type 2 diabetes. Now, the good notion is uh, that uh, there is light at the end of a tunnel or a new horizon as novel drugs and thing here our latest uh, network this is the largest to date, 800, more than 800 trials and close to 500,000 patients with as we all know that the SGLT2 inhibitors, they reduce, as you can see from the odds ratio, uh, by 40% end stage kidney disease, also admissions for heart failure. And at the same time, they even give you benefit in terms of reducing all cause death and uh, cardiovascular death. And emerging and important and is also GLP 1 receptor agonist have a significant favorable impact on the kidney and also in terms of heart failure. This was early on a discussion, but with first studies in and the population studies uh, studied uh, in those uh, trials, clearly that there is also benefit for cardiorenal effects. And for your interest below GLP-1, uh, we have also analyzed non-steroidal um, corticoid receptor agonists, phenarinone, famous studies, fine art studies, and other Figaro, etc. And as you see, uh, this is rising star again, going clearly in people with already early kidney changes as in reduction, stage kidney disease, but also reduction of heart failure. What's interesting in terms of severe hypoglycemia, where shared and uh, GLP-1 receptor agonists are more neutral, uh, they reduce right side in red, as we all know, there are downsides of, of uh, drugs. But we have now a rich armamentarium, and uh, the challenge now is the task today is how we make this work for many people out there in primary care. And uh, perhaps one last notion also has become clear that action in um, heart failure events, uh, is uh, the same across the full spectrum of left of left ventricular ejection fraction uh, confirmed in the deliver study, but first shown in the first study. Now, in cardiology, we have time. Uh, at risk for heart failure. So these are people without signs or symptoms, structural changes, that have an abundance of risk factors. See, on the left, hypertension, CVD, diabetes, obesity, and uh, other aspects. And here we focus on heart failure, which is now stage uh, B, watching out for structural changes but also evidence of increased filling pressure. And this can be picked up early by measuring natriuretic uh, peptides and for ischemic heart disease also using uh, trop troponin. So we have uh, the instruments to narrow down the gap between the manifestation and the diagnosis. And uh, previously we started to treat in stage C. Now we start treat in stage B. Of course, we always want to intervene risk factors, but specifically uh, here uh, we are talking about also the introduction of inhibitors. And at the renal uh, level, and this is uh, the working concept of the DIGO, we watch for the occurrence of 
uh, album in Europe, my album, showed you our own experience. But at the same time, also used uh, uh, function below 60. And uh, it's important to understand both factors are very, very important. As you can see here, they are additive or synergistic, and we look for both and try to print both. So this is uh, a current, uh, perhaps, a concept uh, that we will soon see in the European Heart Journal, uh, that um, first we want to assess the risk by doing risk factors, but the broader concept is on the left side, uh, if family history of diabetes, obesity, hypertension, dyslipidema, smoking, CBD, not only watch for heart failure, but look for a type 2 diabetes in those people because this is all occurring at the same time. And in the middle panel, uh, the suggested biomarkers, uh, that, and of course, at the end of the day, have to take the history or assess uh, organ complications as here. And now the new concept is that on one side we do a cardiorenal metabolic metabolic management on the left side as we go as pathologists and just on the right side we need monitoring and more important organize the disciplinary care according to the uh, scenario. And uh, not losing sight to the importance of uh, going for uh, strict uh, glucose control early on, which is the paradigm of the study, we all legacy effect, and probably also know that recently now have 44 years long evidence on the effectiveness of this, still reducing death significant amount and your diabetic uh, complications. <clears throat> and this is the model for the primary function, and we always have to separate these two aspects and secondary cardiovascular intervention. And in primary uh, prevention, quick uh, metabolic control, just to show the current evidence, metabolism, yes, significant reduction of uh, primary kidney outcomes, but also eye outcomes. And in terms of non-fatal myocardial infection, um, it is uh, less effective in secondary infection. In most studies, it's uh, literal, but it works beautifully in primary infection. So this comes to the point, why not combining the so-called glucocentric view Cardiocentric view. And as you see, the cardiac drugs I mentioned this are GLP1 agonists, GLP2 numbers. Perhaps in the future, with early kidney changes or non steroidal cortical uh, agonists. And then we can differentiate uh, <clears throat> the high cardiovascular uh, risk versus those with low cardio risk very clear what high cardiovascular risk. But it's interesting, recently, also had the results of the GREAT study, and only 6% had established uh, cardiovascular disease. So it's more or less a UK PDS type low cardio risk uh, population. And uh, here there were compared drugs we know well, like Glogen, neutral uh, for uh, cardiovascular uh, benefit, but so for uh, uh, damage or downsides compared to liraglutide, glamaparide, sulfonylura, cetagliptin. And as you see in blue, uh, the winner actually is liraglutide in terms in, of reducing any cardiovascular disease, but already mentioned also reducing hospitalization for heart failure. But the older drugs, most of them are now generic, can be used. Uh, as you can see clearly in chemical conditions uh, in those people with low cardiovascular risk. And at this point, we may use editorial the next steps after metformin, but still go for substance and insulin 
drug for hypoglycemia, and it's, it's more uh, burden of heparide than insulin. So it's also the notion of this uh, large network uh, analysis we just published. I referred to that. And if you look for the line of salt and yes, realize uh, in red, beer hypoglycemia very common compared to basal insulin to uh, below, but at the same time, no risk in terms of worsening uh, heart failure or doing other harm, especially in terms of heparin. So we have come a long way. Uh, I want to summarize. We have a changing picture here and we need to focus cardiorenal metabolic um, aspects. And I think uh, a lot of people feel we have to train all the doctors in primary care to uh, specialists, at least uh, to do the basics. And focus on timely diagnosis, cardiorenal metabolic disorders. Discuss the tools. Tailoring the appropriate personalized metabolic therapy to individual patient Session medicine, considering comorbidities, prognosis, patient value, and consent. And then regular physical evaluation and biomarker monitor for uh, bridging uh, complications at least once a year, or if there are changes more appropriate. Organizing the multidisciplinary care according to scenarios with Nephrologists, nephrologists, et cetera, assuring compliance with CRM therapy. And as we all know, I have listed all those, plus attaining the targets for blood pressure and control. With this tour, Dorison, uh, also not to forget, check the feet, because especially in cardiorenal patients, are at 